Make sure that the women you're sleeping with on the side are not Chinese spies. It's important. It's important. It's important. Important. It's important. Welcome. In the name of love. Before you break my heart. (laughs) Thank you. Our new single is coming out. uh, (laughs) Never. Sometime (laughs) next side of never. Quarter after never. Uh, Which is, you're welcome. (laughs) You're so welcome. (laughs) You can pay us to not (laughs) release that single. (laughs) That's how that works, right? That's, how, that That's how that works. That's how it usually yeah. works. All right, cool. cool. Something, something along Somewhere is the sound of that mic. There it is. I found it. Found the sweet spot. <laughs> <sighs> All righty. Well, we've got a lot to cover this yeah, week. Yeah, we've got, uh, as usual, about three years' worth of news to cover in a week. At least. Everything from, uh, well, everything to everything. Every- from Gina to Biden to election to Rona, and we've even got some sports stories this time. Yeah. And we both care so deeply about sports. So very... It's great watching a bunch of millionaires and deeply rich people. What sport are we talking about? Some sports. Some sports? Yeah. I don't know. I don't care. Which is why yeah. they're on the story. <laughs> on our prep. <laughs> You'll see why I don't care. Tonight, I start with some breaking news. We got some breaking news. <laughs> we got we got some breaking news. We do. Is that uh, CNN? This that was that was CNN. Ah! Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, I, I'll just use that to go go right into right the breaking. Into news. It. So our our breaking news is that uh, the Babylon Bee actually wrote an article about me this week. Oh, it was it was great. We're, we're diving right into our we're daily dose. Right into our daily dose of vitamin <laughs> B with that. Um, so b- the breaking news uh-huh. is a uh, man selflessly offers to let rest of country try vaccine first. I I know it's it's wow. a risk, but it's a risk I'm willing to take. Thank you, Lord Farquhar. You you are so welcome. <laughs> Many of you may die. <laughs> Many of you may die, but that is a risk I'm willing, willing to, to take. take. <laughs> I believe he says sacrifice. But <laughs> it's a sacrifice yeah. I'm willing yes. to make. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is indeed. Um, wow. We all should be more like you. We, we should. <laughs> I mean, it's Christmas. So it's why Christmas. wouldn't I let why the not? elderly and the women and children go first? <laughs> um, aside from that... Uh, Let's see. What other good news do we have here? Oh, uh, there was a man choking in a restaurant, and Dr. Jill Biden uh, was able to spring into action delivering a fantastic educational lecture. Oh, good. Good. Mm -hmm. Like any Um, good doctor. uh, In in political news, uh, Trump made a final appeal uh, this week. Uh, He penned a letter to Santa asking him to overturn (laughs) the... (laughs) the election dear santa i don't dear. ask for a whole lot i've been i've been the best this year i'll make you a deal that you cannot resist imagine trump tower on the north pole it'd be beautiful it'd be, it'd be, be beautiful. gorgeous it'd be the best all the elves they could stay in the penthouse free free room and board for all of your people hot cocoa cookies galore the finest cocoa <laughs> Oh, is that how the story is? That pretty much how it? that goes. Okay, that's yeah, how that goes. Cool. Um, <laughs> that's been your uh, daily dose of vitamin B. So <laughs> enjoy that. I hope you feel happy now. I hope you do too. Because uh, we're about to make you feel sad. Just a little bit. A little sad. A little sad. But first, welcome to the show. 
first, a little housekeeping to pat ourselves on the back. Ooh, we get to pat ourselves we on the back. We get to pat that ourselves on often. the back because we are just a simple little podcast with somewhere around six to ten average viewer, listeners, viewers, whatever. We have about a hundred likes. Yes. As far as Total listening, though, likes. six to ten ish, sometimes more. But uh, yeah. Steadily growing. Steadily. Steadily <laughs> growing. Slow but surely. Slowly but surely. Anyway, last Don't week uh, last week we uh, aired some grievances. It was mostly me airing grievances, I think, but uh, it was both of our grievances. Um, and uh, we talked about uh, the uh, <clears throat> side effects, if you will, of the lockdowns, lockdowns and, and all that stuff. Yeah. One of which being child abuse was gone. Oh, yes. Obviously it gone. It was I not mean, being reported, and so experts were a little worried early on, but then they stopped being worried around April, which is about when it became Donald Trump's fault that the virus was here, even though it wasn't. The, the Blaze reported a CDC report on... Child abuse hospitalizations increased significantly during the pandemic despite emergency room visits plunging. The uh, TLDR of the report is um, emergency room visits basically disappeared because you weren't allowed to go to the emergency room. So inpatient visits went up for child abuse. So children were still being abused and going to the hospital, but nobody was really being prosecuted for it. Um, and their charts, uh, now I've put it out of my visual range. <laughs> uh, despite the decrease in the weekly number of uh, emergency department visits related to child abuse and neglect. That is not what I thought ED stood for. <laughs> no, it is not the blue pill commercial. <laughs> The weekly number of these visits resulting in hospitalization <laughs> remained stable in 2020. However, the yearly percentage of ED visits related to child abuse and neglect resulting in hospitalization increased significantly among all age groups. Uh, if you want some numbers for uh, <clears throat> the percentage of ED visits related to... Uh, stop it. The percentage of ED visits related to child abuse and neglect ending in hospitalization increased significantly among children and adolescents aged less than 18 years from 2.1% in 2019 to 3.2% in 2020. Are you kidding me? A whole 1% uptick? The CDC stated significant increases in the percentage of ED visits related to child abuse and neglect ending in hospitalization were also observed for children aged 0 to 4 years, 3.5 in 2019 versus 5.3 in 2020. Jeez. And 5 to 11 years, 0.7% in 2019 versus 1.3% in 2020. Double. And adolescent age 12 to 17, 1.6 2019 to... Uh, 2.2 2. 2. 2. in 2020. But stay inside. Don't go to work. Don't go to school. Don't go to school. We have to save the children. It's for the children who are all but immune from this disease, according to the CDC. <clears throat> um, also, uh, we reported on hospitalizations. Um, uh, and you know, hospitals are full. Hospitals are full everywhere. Hospitals are filling up in California. The hospitals are so full that LA is using one of those hospitals as a, uh, Hollywood production site. Hey, isn't that the hospital from scrubs? Probably. Hmm. Uh, this hospital was in mothballs, basically, and they opened it back up to help with the pandemic stuff. And then they closed it back down within, I think it was like six weeks or something like that. I don't know. Go away, Ben. Uh, the, the hospital that was closed and then reopened as a surge hospital. Hmm. Yeah. And some people were a little upset driving by 
seeing that uh, there's tents set up for people to eat outside as restaurants are being told you can't eat outside. And it's a hospital that's being used for film production when, you know, cases are on the rise. Oh, hospitals are full. Stay inside. (gasps) Called it. Also, we talked about, uh, this was back in October, and I think we probably brushed on it before October, technically. Um, But if you go back in our episodes, release the Gretchen, we talked about the New York Post story with Hunter Biden and pointed some things out. CNN is, uh, has some news that there's a criminal investigation into Hunter Biden's folk, uh, into Hunter Biden's dealings in China and Ukraine and other places in the world. And his money wasn't fully reported. So they're looking at his taxes. And uh, to add more padding to the... I love how they, like, shade their source when it isn't something reliable. Uh Have you you noticed that in a lot of these articles? It's not an FBI investigator or, or somebody involved in the case. It's... It's simply just someone familiar with the details. <laughs> An anonymous so, source. W- 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 Larry, your copy guy? <laughs> Who, who's... Jim told us. Credentials, the people. Post front page announcing oh, oh, Biden's oh, oh. secret stop, stop, emails. Stop, shut it. Would you stop that? Oh, jeez. I was talking. So rude. Stelter, shut up. <laughs> what? It, what is... What is what? Why you do? Uh, carry on. <laughs> that was that was pretty much it. I was just ranting about uh, their their lack of actually giving real sources and any of their stuff. I think it's funny. I, I get the like protect a source thing. Like it's it's not hard to keep a source anonymous and still refer to their credentials, right? Instead of just saying someone familiar with the. <laughs> the case. Someone familiar with the I'm, case. Because, because I mean, seriously, Joe Schmo sitting in his basement that's actually read something since October that isn't CNN is familiar with the case. So <laughs> you have you have a point. Probably more we, familiar with the case than than these jack wagons are. We since are them. more familiar with the case, <laughs> and I will prove it with. A montage that I made. <laughs> yes, two weeks in a row, montage of ooh, ooh. things. This one includes us and how awesome we are. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I made this. And uh, Ooh, here we go. Up in CNN the top, sucks. Up in the top right corner are the dates of when these things happened. And here we go. The New York this. Post front page announcing Biden's secret emails. This is October 18th. involving Hunter Biden. As political entertainment goes, this is not a brand new TV show. It's just a new season of the show. Hunter Biden's business dealings in Ukraine were a key part of the plot last season in the impeachment of President Trump. Hunter has already apologized. Well, he's already admitted to poor judgment and swampy behavior. Poor judgment. His father has said that it will not happen again. And at this point, most people have moved on. His father has said that his illegal activities will not happen again. Breaking news now. President-elect Joe Biden's son, Hunter, announced that the U.S. attorney in Delaware has notified his lawyer that the U.S. attorney has investigated Hunter Biden's taxes. There's more breaking news. We're following December 10th. President-elect Biden's son, Hunter, announcing that he is under federal tax investigation. Hunter Biden, and in it is this. This is us. Basically damning email that shows that Joe Biden, October 20-something, enriching his family via his vice presidency in Ukraine, Um, verifying a lot of what uh, conservative talk radio and media outlets were saying was, has been going on for what, two years now, something like that. At least. What are you learning, first of all, about this investigation? Well, Wolf, this is an investigation that goes back to 2018. Two years ago. And what's more fun about it is, (laughs) ha, this, this was all picked up because of investigating Trump in Russia. 
Paul, but quite honestly, when I met this with the Attorney News. General, was really talking about the corrupt, the corrupt FBI investigation related to the Russian hoax. So I, I don't December believe I really talked about yes. our investigations, Hunter Biden, which, by the way, we never targeted the Bidens. That they came, you know, that whole issue was brought forth during the impeachment. That's when we started uh, expanding our Ukraine huh. investigation to include his financial dealings. And then when we started seeing all these wire transfers uh, that were connected to Hunter Biden. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> if they didn't touch Trump and Russia, we probably never would have found out about this at all. Right. But Trump needs a closing argument. <laughs> this so is back to October. He and his media allies usually rely on whataboutism. Right. So you ask about the Trump family swampiness and they say, what about Hunter Biden? You raise Trump's legal exposure and they say, what about Obamagate? You might say, or liberal critics say, Trump is compromised. And they say, no, Biden's compromised. What about ism is like a glue that holds the base together. It also supplies hours and hours of TV drama. So stay mad and stay tuned. That's what it's really about. And then it was blocked. You couldn't <laughs> access it through social media. You couldn't share it. And if you tried to access it, um, it say that you get a little prompt that uh, this story could be damaging. D damaging to, to who? Who's it damaging? <laughs> um, the New York well, Post. Well, it's damaging the future president of the United oh, States. Oh, oh. <laughs> Damaging to oh, their case. Oh, wait. That's what it's really about. That's what it's really about. This uh, is CNN. And then News. I'll pause it here for us. Some headlines. Politico, Justice Department's interest in Hunter Biden covered more than taxes. Rolling Stone, DOJ investigation of Hunter Biden goes beyond taxes. Federal prosecutors are looking at the president-elect's son financial dealings with foreign countries, China and Ukraine being them. December 10th, 2020. <sighs> the Washington Times, A.G. Barr hid hid two Hunter Biden probes from public for months. The New York Times investigation of his son is likely to hang over Biden as he takes office, unless the Trump Justice Department, blah, 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 blah. We told you all of this. I mean, I, I don't want to say I told you so, but I freaking told, so. told you so. I freaking told you so. CNN sucks. There. And uh, we'll put that little montage. We need a up. CNN sucks pen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like it. I don't want to start a trial. Stop sending me things. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with pulling up Did all Google these... Did Google hear you talking about blue pills no, over there, Daily, Trevor? Daily Wire that... wanted me to start a trial of things. Uh, uh, ba -da -ba -da. So since we're here on Biden... <coughs> ha -pa! Business partner warned Hunter Biden that he did not report 400000 in income from Burisma. Report, oh. report, report, report. Burisma. And this goes hmm. into emails that were on, I don't know, a couple of hard drives probably that were found. In 2017, going back to 2014. 14. It's almost as if it's been going on for a couple of years or more. Or more. Huh. And uh, the 400000 Donald Trump asked about the $400,000 that Biden received, Hunter Biden received from Burisma. That's a number that has shown up uh, before this week. Mm -hmm. But if you talk about it, you know, that's just disinformation. Russian disinformation. Russia gate. What about Trump? What about what Biden? A Shut up still. I want to talk about what about ism. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Biden's got this we, stuff going. We on should over really here. look at uh, Obama for the new president elect has links to Russia. But what we were just talking about, Obama? No, Russia, Russia, <laughs> Russia, 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 and uh, China also. So uh, a lot of this. A lot of the stuff we have today actually broke on my birthday, so it was a great birthday present for me. <laughs> Yay, birthday! Happy, happy uh, birthday! You are officially handicapped. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. 
The best birthday present I could give you. The best. So, uh, Sky News. I, I mean, you did try to park in the handicap spot when we went to lunch for your birthday, so it kind of fits. In my defense, <laughs> they have not repainted that for at least 10 years. At least. <laughs> it's probably been and, four or five. And there was no sign. <laughs> <laughs> and the, there is no one else there. The the uh, walking hatch mark going across the bottom of the four stalls wasn't uh, <laughs> wasn't sign enough. <laughs> I've been told to stay inside for so long. I forgot what outside's like. <laughs> <laughs> Another so, side effect of the a, lockdowns. That is a great excuse, and <laughs> I'm all right with it. Gonna have to use that with a cop next time I get pulled over. <laughs> I've, I've been told to stay inside Sorry, for I've so been, long. I don't. I've been quarantined to... for so long. I forgot what the rules of the outside world are. Can I come into the out now? <laughs> Can I come into the out now? <laughs> um. Anyway, Sky News Australia. I believe this is uh, the same place where we were shouting. Australia this, gets it. This, this is. Does Australia still get it? Australia gets it. So much so that they f- uh, they found a leak. Oh, no way. Why is it that Australia knows what's going on better than our own country does? Major leak exposes... Because they don't listen to CNN, isn't it? I mean, they probably do. Major leak exposes members and lifts the lid on the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, This leak basically says there are almost 2 million members of the Chinese Communist Party, and... This leaked thing has um, their names, their locations, sometimes phone numbers, and their rank within the party and what they're trying to do. Jeez. All around the world. Um, the, bulk of it, the bulk of it was, uh, I believe, in Europe and uh, the UK. And I think some of it, I wouldn't be surprised if some of it was China. I haven't actually read the whole thing. I'm just not at all surprised that China is everywhere. <laughs> the sh- the shock in this isn't that there's two million Chinese Communist Party operatives around the world. The shock is that we learned about it from Australia. That's that's more of the shock, and it comes on the heels of Hunter Biden's being investigated with his dealings in China. He got a really big ring, and Eric Swalwell, which actually. <laughs> If you are a solely a subscriber to New York Times, you know nothing about Eric Swalwell, and I will prove it. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. Eric. Well, let's do Swalwell, right? Swalwell. Swalwell. With two L's. Like two R's. Because he's so well. So well. Right, 259 oh, hey, results. Well, look, there's there's stuff right there. And from Gun control. You know, gun control 18 and 18 questions. questions and Brittany Watts. I don't know who that is, but apparently he loves her. Probably a Chinese spy. Because so, that's important for the New York Times to report. So we'll do a specific date range. The uh, Chinese stuff with Eric Swalwell broke. So. Just, just go for the past month. So the first no, no, just like right there. It says past week, past month, past year. Oh, just go past, past month. month. Okay. Past month. That's sure to cover. Oh, oh, look at that. Huh? Not a thing. Not a thing about Eric Swalwell sleeping with Chinese spies. Hmm. You know, it's interesting that uh, he's sleeping with a Chinese spy. And uh, rather than investigating him, they just told him to, you know, hey, cut your ties. You know, with cut this your spy. cut your cut your ties oh, there. Yeah, and that is done. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Uh, deleted. Okay, good, good to go. And of All course, right. he's he's completely innocent, well, which is why don't you do that anymore? Yeah. Make make sure that the women you're sleeping with on the side are not Chinese spies. It's important. It's important. It's important. Important. It's important. Now I'm interested to read that uh, love article from last year. <laughs> since uh, that that name was all, not Fang Fang, so a, I don't know sudden, who he was sleeping with last year. All of a sudden, that it's was got different. Some <laughs> and you know, Swalwell is completely innocent because completely innocent because he denied sleeping with. Well, he didn't deny sleeping with the. 
Chinese spy. Didn't, but didn't he deny. denied doing anything, disclosing any information. Well, he didn't deny disclosing any information. He didn't. With her. No, but well, he did blame Trump he blamed for it. Trump, so. He blamed Trump for leaking <laughs> the information oh, right. that he was he, with the he, spy. He blamed Trump for everybody finding out that he was sleeping with and, a spy. And, and uh-huh. on top of that, you know. This is not getting better for him, on, is on it? On top of that, you know he's innocent because he, he said, you know, Leaders of Congress know that he was with Fang Fang. So, you know, completely, it's above board. It's good. It's all fine. <laughs> if I'm going fine under the bus, dandy. I'm dragging you all with me. <laughs> By the way, what I read there. all of them nude it. <laughs> Not an appropriate use of the word nude. Yes, it is. <laughs> if Ted Cruz can tweet out, I've been saying for years, screw the Chinese. I didn't know Eric Swalwell would take it literally. I can say... <laughs> Eric Swalwell pointed to Congress and said, they all nude it. (laughs) (laughs) That's how he's making his money on the side. (laughs) He might be the cleanest politician on in in that section of government. (laughs) I mean, they all make money by screwing somebody. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was a fun rabbit hole I could keep going on, but uh, <laughs> Swalwell. Swalwell. <laughs> Swalwell. Oh, great. Love it. Uh, Love now, it. Now we're on to the stuff that really pisses us off. Oh, there's more things that yeah. piss us off? We've, we patted great. ourselves on the back, basically, the, that last little bit. Yeah. Well, we did a good job. So. Yep. Congratulations to us. We know things that CNN already knew but refused to report. <laughs> Do you know why they refused to report it? Your Honor, I object! And why is that, Mr. Reed? Because it's devastating to my case! Overruled. Good, Good call! Because it's devastating to my candidate. <laughs> Good call! <laughs> if only there were judges like that today, because... Right. On what grounds? Because... So the Electoral College is uh, gathered together and did their thing yesterday. Joe Biden is the president-elect. Not really. No, he's not still. Not, not until January 6th. And and everybody that keeps saying, well, they, they all voted. Yes, but... The states have sent okay. their electors, yes. This is, this is, this is, <laughs> this, well, and, and not just that, but even that is contested because we have what's called a dueling electoral vote. So the states, if they still have litigation or other things going on that may decertify their vote, they can send more than their regular set of votes. And then on January 6th, vice president gets up and goes, I have two sets of votes from this state. Which one am I opening? And he can open the one that doesn't have the governor's stamp on it. Because something changed between now and January 6th. Right. So, we currently have Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Arizona. Nevada. Nevada is not currently in trial, but they but Nevada did um, send the, the other electoral votes. But the first five all currently have litigation ongoing. But the Supreme Court shot down their uh, Texas's fraud case. But the first five all have litigation currently ongoing. But the Supreme Court shot down Texas's fraud case. But the first five... (laughs) (laughs) There's... there's, It's different. (laughs) Two, (laughs) Texas's thing was not about fraud. (laughs) Texas's thing was about a grievance between states. Texas's thing was about... should not have have been shut down. It should have been listened to... And then ruled on. Yeah, since since we're here. Regardless, but anyway. If the Supreme Court... So, this is what drives me crazy. The Supreme Court objected the case. They turned it down. No, they didn't listen to it. They, they refused to hear they it. They refused they, to hear the case. They didn't rule on it one All way or nine another. All justices turned it down. No, Mm-mm. they refused to hear the case. If yeah. O.J. Simpson went to trial for murder... And the judge says, I'm not hearing the case. O.J. Simpson doesn't get tried for murder. 
And he can be tried again for murder. For murder. After he writes a book. If a judge. If I did it. <laughs> if a judge hears the case and he is exonerated, he cannot be tried again. Texas, or the same thing. It's called double jeopardy. Texas can still bring this case to the Supreme Court. And I would be very surprised if they don't because one of the state's Supreme Court agreed with Texas. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and people from the states getting sued in, in, in the trial agreed with Texas. Yeah, for, for example... Kind of. In Georgia, this is old news, but I thought it was still very pertinent. So Georgia was having their uh, their uh, hearings on stuff, and they've been turned down, not rejected, or not, uh, not listened to, but they were rejected. So they can still technically try them on, uh, bring the cases forward. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, in the hearings, they invited the Secretary of State to testify to the state legislature on the election stuff because he's been saying it's all done. We've counted twice. We check the signatures. It's all done. And uh, he uh, he uh, decided to not show up and testify. So he didn't want to be on the record saying that it's been done and certified because of some legal advice that he received. This uh, douche canoe... <laughs> Wait, wait. You were you were asked to to do what? Uh, te- testify uh, about the uh, certification? No, no, no. Don't don't do that. Don't seeing, don't do seeing that. Seeing as how you didn't follow the law, you probably don't. Oh, want oh, to why? Testify. Why? What? Just, just yep. Do not admit to anything illegal on the stand. Do not testify. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so which one of you lied? Yeah. <laughs> this was, this was it you or Comey? <laughs> We are advised by our attorneys not attend to not to attend. I'm guessing he left a word out there. Twitter. Not attend because of pending litigation. They invited the Giuliani team, which is pushing continuing disinformation. That disinformation is endangering lives. One of the things the Giuliani team is pushing is that they didn't actually do an actual recount in Georgia because they didn't verify the signatures. And I think why he didn't testify is because he ordered a recount checking and verifying signatures this time. But Giuliani's mm. team has no evidence that fraud may have occurred. None. None. Absentee mm. ballot signature audit ordered after Georgia election. Uh, no, this is not the first one or the second one. This is the third recount of Georgia, this time actually checking signatures, so the Secretary of State says. So, so it, it won't be any different than the first two. Right, except for the second one changed the vote count by a lot. Oh, so, so it won't be so, any different so the, than the, the first So the first one changed the vote count in favor of Trump. Ah. And then the second one changed the vote count even more in favor of Trump. But other than that, it's there's no change. There's no, really. no change no at change. all. We're not changing anywhere. We're just recounting straight across. Yeah. And this comes... Exactly uh, what and this comes. But we're uh, also verifying signatures this time. So, <laughs> yeah, this, uh, which we didn't do the first two times for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the un- the unprecedented signature audit could show whether signatures on absentee ballot envelopes really did match the voter signatures kept on file. I don't know, kind of like what the state law says it should be. But there's no way to match voter signatures to ballots after envelopes were opened. Oh, so uh, you got to throw those out. The right to cast a secret ballot is guaranteed by the state constitution. Uh, election officials in Cobb County, thats so that that's what they're doing. They're starting in Cobb County, and depending on how that goes, they'll recount the entire state. Mm. <clears throat> Cobb County is a suburb of Atlanta, I believe. Yeah, um, it is. Now that signature matching has been attacked again and again with no evidence, except for I'm doing it again because I couldn't testify that it was done right beforehand. I feel that we (laughs) need to take steps to restore confidence in our elections. Now that they haven't let me get away with it, I feel like we should do what they say. Hmm. 
Mm. Starting immediately, we are pulling all of our resources together with GBI, Georgia Bureau of Investigation, maybe? To mm, con- I guess, yeah. To conduct a yeah, signature is. match audit GBI. in Cobb County. Uh, now that you all called me out on BSing this and uh, not actually doing my job, I'm going to actually do my job this time in one county, and we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, and then uh, let's do Wisconsin first. Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Antrim County. Nope, the oh, uh, Supreme the Court. The Supreme Court yeah. one. Okay. So as as we said, Texas, Texas's case lost. Well, didn't lost. It was not heard by the Supreme Court based off not having any standing. Texas. Which? Texas and 20 states of okay. the United States do not have standing so, before the Supreme fun, Court. Fun description of this. So the reason or the, the, the standing that they went to court with, what they said their standing was, was that if Georgia went Democrat in the, the runoffs, we would have a split, 50-50 split in the Senate, uh-huh. which would then make... The VP, the tie-breaking voice in the Senate. Yes. So they were stating that if that happened, then they would be disenfranchised because these other states broke their own laws in order to elect the VP that would be, which would be Harris. Right. So from that standing, they have future standing. But it was rejected because they don't have current standing, meaning no injury has currently been caused. (laughs) But this is a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. Because if in the runoff, Georgia goes Democrat, and we have a 50-50 split in the Senate, and then that exact instance happens, and Texas tries to sue again at that point where they have standing it would then get thrown out because they should have sued during the election in which the injury was caused. (laughs) This is how this bullshit works. Yeah, and uh, they did that to him with this case. They told him, well, you knew knew these things before the election, so you should have done it before the election. Right. And then on top of that, they but said... But they couldn't because they didn't have standing. That was that was the uh, the uh, law changes in... Was that Georgia, I think, that and, you're referring to? And Pennsylvania. And Pennsylvania. And Michigan. Where the, the Republican Wisconsin. Party sued the state because the changes that they made to the law were illegal. Because it wasn't done through the legislature. But they were told that they should have sued during the primary... But they couldn't have sued during the primary because the only thing that was affected during the primary was the Democrat Party's primary. (laughs) They rigged their own election. So (laughs) the Republicans couldn't sue then because they had no standing. Yeah. They can't sue now because they should have sued back then. Uh Uh-huh. So what's the issue? There is not enough middle fingers to explain. <laughs> no, I'm not that, a Dr. Pepper. But yeah, the uh, so the Supreme Court tells Texas you don't have standing because of what Mike said, and also they then told them, and plus we don't really have room for it on our agenda for the rest of the year. So if you see the secretary on the way out, she can pencil you in for next year. Probably we uh, we don't want to hear your case because we don't want to hear it. Because we have more important cases to listen to, like someone needs to get a sex change or There's something. carolers outside, and <laughs> I've got more important outside. things to do than but uh, listen to something that could change our entire country. I would argue that Texas now has standing immediately with the Supreme Court because one of the states in question, Wisconsin, their Supreme Court said states... The state did not have authority to abandon voter ID rules due to COVID. Right. And uh, they say that the state should not certify their votes. So the Supreme Court of Wisconsin says, no certify the votes. No votes for you. But Texas doesn't have standing. Arguing the same thing that the state Supreme Court said 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, and by the way, this was released after the uh, state certified their votes. They might be trying to screw me. Well, of course they're trying to screw you. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Local Wisconsin election officials. This is from uh, Greg Jarrett. I don't know. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> Um, by Jarrett's staff. By Jarrett's staff. So probably himself. I'm guessing. <laughs> Looks like a local like podcaster newsletter. thing or something. Yeah. Um, anyway, local Wisconsin election officials made a terrible judgment call, and the Wisconsin Supreme Court has confirmed it. On Monday, the court ruled, quote, that state and local election officials erred when they gave blanket permission, allowing voters to declare themselves homebound and skip voter ID requirements in the 2020 election. Translation. Local of election officials erred you done when, they, effed up, a. A. when Ron. they did not follow the law. Uh, the error resulted in the opportunity Ooh. for Republicans to challenge tens of thousands of ballots, blah, 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 so on and I so remembered forth. which state I forgot in the, uh, in the uh, trials and uh, um, ballots thing. Uh-huh. Apparently. Oh. Oh, it was a thing that I'd seen earlier that said New Mexico still had one, but I don't think it does. I haven't heard anything out of New Mexico for a while. <coughs> So there were seven states that cast. Nope, it was New Mexico. Yep. Ooh. New Mexico. So New Mexico has a current lawsuit and they cast dueling electors. So we have currently Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, New Mexico, and Arizona all with lawsuits. And all six of those plus Nevada have cast uh, dueling electors, which if all of those states were to get tossed out as uncertifiable, we would have a contested election. If any two or three of those states got tossed out, we would have a contested election. You're looking at over 80 electoral votes in contest right there. How many? Over 80. So, I don't know the, the exact number off the top of my head, but we're over 80, which would put which Biden ones, roughly to 20-something. It's uh, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Oh. Uh. My prediction would be off if all of them flip for Trump. <laughs> 316, if that's the case. Oh, it's only off by like 10. And speaking, while we're on this little tangent, um, Joe Biden, with his electors, quoted Donald Trump and saying it's a landslide victory. I think Donald Trump should quote Hillary Clinton in saying this was a fraudulent election and he is uh, not the president. Because that's what the mainstream media and the Democrats did for the last, I don't know, four years. <laughs> so that <laughs> illegitimate, that's, uh, illegitimate president. That's what he said. That's 84. That's 84 electoral votes right there uh, being contested. Yeah. So with that, I was a little upset at something that came out, so much so that I printed it off. Mm -hmm. So I could highlight it. And then I got to the point where I was basically just highlighting the entire first part. <laughs> the entire summary. Um, so in Michigan, the uh, Secretary of State uh, had been withholding a certain set of documents until after the certification. Um and uh, she was saying, you know, it's above board, everything's fine, and except except uh, this report that came out was uh, from Allied Security Operations Group. A judge ordered that it finally be released in uh, Michigan, and this group did a forensic look at Dominion software. Um, we'll put a link to the thing when. But we'll scroll through it here. Blah, 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 blah. There's all the stuffs. So mm -hmm. a bit of who they are. Um, the guy that headed this, Russell James Ramsland Jr. 
Um, let's see. Bill Bailey was the client and attorney Matthew DiPerno. Um, uh, oh, okay. Not Ram, Ramsign Jr. I, I don't know. I don't know. He says, and I am a resident of Dallas County, Texas. I hold an MBA from Harvard University and a political science degree from Duke University. I have worked with the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, also known as NASA, and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, MIT. among other, other organizations, and have run businesses all over the world, many of which are highly technical in nature. I have served on technical I bet one of them panels. from Russia. <laughs> Probably, with the way this report goes. Um... I am part of the management team of Allied Security Operations Group. Um, it's a group of globally engaged professionals who come from various disciplines to include the Department of Defense, Secret Service, Department of Homeland Security, and the Central Intelligence Agency. It provides hmm. a range of security services, but has a particular emphasis on cybersecurity, open source investigation, and penetration testing of networks. We employ a wide variety of cyber and use the word penetrate. <laughs> we employ a wide variety of cyber and cyber forensic analysis. We have patents pending in a variety of applications from no, novel, novel network security applications to supervisory control and data acquisition protection and safe browsing solutions for the dark and deep web. For this report, I have relied on these experts and resources. So his resume, he's got a resume. He knows a thing or two about technology stuff. He can probably disassemble your gaming PC with his eyes closed and the, put the it two back together. The too long didn't read for this forensic report is they basically found Jesse Ventura uh, asking questions at one of the, uh, the local... Uh, county polling stations. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying that Biden was in one of the uh, booths there, shifting ballots around or anything. But I'm just, I'm just asking, asking questions. questions. I'm just asking questions. Just asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> so they they say in their purpose and preliminary conclusions. Um, so the reason why I'm reading this, first of all, if you do find this on any news site that's not a conservative leaning news site, you'll see them quote little snippets of it here and there. And say something about how it doesn't really prove anything or anything like that. It, there's nothing. It to doesn't it. say that there's systemic fraud involved in the Dominion system. It just says that there's some discrepancy. There's there was some some there were some glitches, some technical and, glitches. And I've got to make little jokes like the thing about Ves, Jesse Vent Vesi Gentura. Wow, um, <laughs> as we as we do this because it is a legal document and it is tedious. It, <laughs> it reads almost as such. It does, almost, almost um, as such, except much more angry. Yes. For us. So much, the purpose... Much more make us angry. The purpose <laughs> of this audit is to test the integrity of Dominion voting systems in how it performed in Antrim County, Michigan, for the 2020 election. So just one county in Michigan, and Antrim County was a county that was for Biden, and then someone said, hey, what's this glitch of stuff here? Said, oh, yeah, that's a... that We messed that up. That's a... Uh, that spike that's actually supposed to be for Trump. Sorry, we these thousands of votes we talked about a few weeks ago. I love the beginning of the second paragraph of this right here because this is basically the summarization yeah. of everything this, right here. We conclude that the Dominion voting system is intentionally and purposefully designed with inherent errors to create systemic fraud and influence election results. I've got it highlighted right there. Oh, so, hey. <laughs> yeah. wow. Uh, wow. 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 The system intentionally generates an enormously high number of ballot errors. The electronic ballots are then transferred for ad adjudication. Adjudication. The intentional errors lead to bulk Which, adjudication of ballots with so, no oversight. Uh, to explain adjudication, because I actually did my research on this one. <laughs> I read something. I read something. You should be so proud of I me. I prepared. <laughs> I read something every week. Don't be like that. Anyway, uh, I know I was making fun of myself. It's fine. So adjudication is essentially the, the, the way it works with these Dominion systems is the ballot goes through and has a scan error. So it basically determines that the machine can't determine which vote was cast off of the ballot. So it kicks the ballot back out in a report that then somebody has to go through and manually fix it. Yeah, manually pick who that person voted for. Um, and part of uh, part of this that I was reading in another article 
um, not the actual forensics report, but an actual article was stating that the adjudication was not monitored or supervised in any way in a lot of counties. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they say that in here. The intentional errors lead to bulk adjudication of ballots with no oversight, no transparency, and no audit trail. This leads to voter or election fraud. On what grounds? On what grounds does no oversight of voting get lead to fraud? Forensic reporting. <laughs> Based on our study, we conclude that the Dominion voting system should not be used in Michigan or any other state. I included that myself. We further conclude that the results of Antrim County should not have been certified. And by the way, Antrim County is Trump. Yes, is for Trump, Trump won Antrim County. And I wholeheartedly agree with them. Should not be certified. Um, and this goes hand in hand with something I was telling you about earlier, an article I was reading about uh, a insurance fraud adjuster. <laughs> who, so someone that deals with fraud specifically, specifically for their career. And he's, he's, he's a, he, well, he's an insurance fraud analyst. So, so literally what he does is take mounds and mounds and mounds of data from insurance and, and uh-huh. different factors involved with, with insurance claims and things like that crunches the numbers to determine if fraud was committed with the numbers. And he did it with the U S election, excluding New York, (laughs) which, which I thought was funny because he was, he was just like, that one has too many control factors that I just don't want to mess with. (laughs) And, and he did it. He did it multiple times each time adjusting the number of control factors he had. The last time he ran it, he had over 100 control points, including age, race, sex, uh, education level, (laughs) poverty level, literally everything he could think of, (laughs) to the point where the last one he ran, he said, could not possibly be accurate because there were too many overlaying control factors. And it still showed a, what was it, one point, I think it was 1.0, a 1.0% shift on each side, meaning a 2% overall shift minimum. (laughs) Across the range of the studies he did, he had 2% to 3.6% shift in all? all counties that use Dominion software. Is that across all. the country? Well, that's interesting because this report dives into that a little bit. They Does it? they throw some numbers out first of all. Um, this is a breakdown of votes tabulated for the 2020 election in Antrim County, showing different dates for the tabulation of the same votes. November 3rd, registered voters, 22,082. And all three of those are the same. November 3rd, November 5th, November 21st. So when I read these numbers, keep those data in mind because that's how I'm going to read them. (sighs) Total votes cast, 16,047, 18,059, 16,044. So there's different votes from the same votes. (sighs) Um, Biden, 7769, 7289, 5960. Trump, 4509, 9783, 9748. Third party, 145, 255, 241. Write in, 14, 20, 23. How do you mess up write in count? <laughs> right? <laughs> when, it's, when you can count them on your digits on your hands and toes. Total votes for president, November 3rd, November 5th, November 21st, 12,423, 17,327, 15,949. The same votes, three different dates, three different numbers. Because that makes sense. Yeah, only a lot. Uh, The report points out the Antrim County Clerk and Secretary of State, Jocelyn Benson, 
have stated that the election night error detailed above by the flip from Trump to Biden was the result of human error caused by the failure to update the Menace Mandalorian Township Tabulator. <laughs> 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 this is the way. This is not the way. This is the way. Uh, prior to election night for a down ballot race. Do you we, know the way? This is the way. This is the way. Uh, we we disagree and conclude that the vote flip occurred because of machine error built into the voting software designed to create error. Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson's statement on November 6, 2020, that the correct results always were and continue to be reflected on the tabulator totals tape. That statement was false. Was false. So uh, <clears throat> here's getting closer to what Mike was talking about earlier. The allowable election error rate established by the Federal Election Commission guidelines is of 1 in 250,000 ballots. That's point zero 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 eight percent of the ballots can be in error, and the FEC is fine with that. We observed an error rate of sixty eight point zero five percent. That's only like eight million times more. If only off the top of my head, math is right. This demonstrated a significant and fatal error in security and election integrity. You don't say. The results of the Antrim County 2020 election are not certifiable. This is a result of machine and or software error, not human error. They're not even saying people fraudulently did this, at least the poll workers. They're saying the machines and software were designed to do this. Which is what we've been saying for weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they go into more details about that stuff. Let's see. Um, uh, more boring stuff. Here we go. Um, for those that are watching, we're down here on 15. Significantly, the computer system shows vote adjudication logs for prior years. But all adjudication log entries for the 2020 election cycle are missing. missing. Mm. Huh. That's not suspicious. The adjudication process is the simplest way to manually manipulate votes. The lack of records prevents any form of audit accountability, and their conspicuous absence is extremely suspicious since the files exist for previous years using the same software. Removal of these files violates state law and prevents a meaningful audit even if the secretary wanted to conduct an audit. We must conclude that the 2020 election cycle records have been manually removed. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on November 21st, 2020, so a couple weeks after the election, an unauthorized user unsuccessfully attempted to zero out election results. This demonstrates additional tampering with data. So now they're getting into the actual fraud side of things. So the numbers before was just the machine screwing things up. And now they're pointing out after forensic analysis, we see people were trying to access these files and delete them. After and the they fact. deleted the adjudication logs and... <clears throat> huh. 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 Uh, yeah, more stuff that's infuriating and... Not really exciting read material for online. Um, I will, however, read something that comes from the illustrious President Barack Obama right before he left office. Yeah. Uh, because this is all about Trump, right? So why not bring the former president, Barack Obama, in here? DNI responsibilities. I don't know what DNI do not interrogate do not investigate do not investigate responsibilities <laughs> <laughs> oh is that not what uh in in <laughs> michigan's case yes that's what do, it means do not investigate do not interrogate <laughs> um, oh, i'm lost president obama signed executive order uh signed executive order on national critical infrastructure on january 6 2017 stating in section one cybersecurity of federal networks 
The executive branch operates its information technology on behalf of the American people. The president will hold heads of executive departments and agencies accountable for managing cybersecurity risk to their enterprises. In addition, because risk management decisions made by the agency heads can affect the risk to the executive branch as a whole and to national security, it is also the policy of the United States to manage cybersecurity risk as an executive branch enterprise. Basically, Barack Obama, in his executive order, said the president has jurisdiction to make sure the election is good as far as IT is concerned. Director of National Intelligence, by the way. Ha <laughs> ha Who, who uh, oh, wait, he was fired because he said this is the most secure election ever, but one county says there's 68% discrepancy. And I still think he got fired because... He said that because he knew that he was getting fired. <laughs> Probably. Because it sounds like they've known about some of this stuff for a while. And and it's just now kind of at least, trickling out to the rest of us. At least the agent head, the agency heads and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. So um, President Obama's executive order further stated, effective immediately, each agency head shall use the framework for improving critical infrastructure cybersecurity developed by the National Institute of standards and technology uh support to critical infrastructure carry on carry on carry on uh donald trump uh in july of 2018 strengthened president obama's executive order to include requirements to ensure u.s election systems processes and its people were not manipulated by foreign meddling either through electronic or systemic manipulation social media or physical changes made in hardware software or supporting systems Yeah, but, you know, when uh, social media suppresses a damning story on a potential presidential candidate, that's not, you know, violating that executive order at all, and neither is uh, heads of state sitting on reports on potential presidential people. Because they don't want to get involved with, they want to, they don't want to manipulate the election, so they're going to sit on a story that could absolutely change the outcome of the election. But by sitting on it, you are changing the outcome of the election. (laughs) Barr. William Barr. Bill Barr. Bill Barr. That's a disappointment right there. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, there's 23 pages of it, and they go through. They show evidence of stuff, data points, IT jargon, a lot mixed with legal jargon. It's a fun read. A lot it's a of fun, information. Fun read. Yeah, if you've ever like gone and grabbed a garden hose and turned it on thinking you were going to take a drink out of it and thinking it was just like your one at home that, you know, just kind of comes out a little bit, but then you find out that you're actually on a farm and the guy that owns the farm has turned the pressure up 5,000% and you get blasted in the face by a fire hose stream out of your little garden hose. That's about what it feels like to read. (laughs) this particular (laughs) forensic analysis uh yeah the uh maybe nobody else has experienced that i might be weird it's it's awful specific (laughs) (laughs) not speaking from experience or anything oh Uh so (laughs) <laughs> you were uh, talking about dueling electors. Yes. Let's pull this up. So I typed in dueling electors into uh, my search here. I bet you got a kick-ass band video. That actually would be a good band name. <laughs> uh, no, unfortunately. Um, so results for dueling electors, as I'm not seeing any mainstream media thing pop up for dueling electors. What about Reuters? Do they count as mainstream? I don't know. Probably. I think they're mainstream. I don't know. 
But I was thinking more of the uh, cable networks, I guess. There's no CNN. There's no MSNBC. There's no NBC News, ABC News. Fox News doesn't even seem to have it. Uh, Yahoo News has it. <laughs> Yahoo! Yahoo! <laughs> News they break. get a green check mark from NewsGuard, so I assume Reuters is... Metro. Yeah, nothing. Um, the funny thing is, so dueling electors isn't a new thing. That's like, you know, New York Times, CNN, all these people will keep saying, there's no such thing as... Uh, no. 1960. Yep. Richard Nixon. Yep. Dueling electors. Look it up. Yep. Also... Uh, in the form of faithless electors, you can look to the last election and find that two electors that were supposed to go to Trump did not vote for Trump. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He still won, obviously, but <laughs> he should have had 306, I think, but he got 304. Mm-hmm. So technically he got 304. Or officially he got 304. Technically he got 306. <laughs> um, anyways... Uh, did you have something in this Georgia one you wanted to point out? Oh, no, I just thought it was funny, so I sent it to you earlier. All right, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's just the irony is thick it's with a, that article. It's a story from November of last year. Georgia hopes new voting system will protect 2020 elections. <laughs> What's the new voting system? Uh, a dominion. dominion. Yeah, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. The state evaluators ranked second best. So. And critics said, we'll leave elections vulnerable. <laughs> the swift transition so, to new voting equipment I, has raised eyebrows far from Georgia. <laughs> a year a year ago, November 4th, 2019. What Georgia is trying to do basically blows my mind, said Dwight Shellman, an election official at the Colorado Secretary of State's office. Of course, God, Colorado. Don't come back. <laughs> Of course, Colorado also uses Dominion. Uh, yeah. Uh, should we do some sports? Should we do some sure, sports? we can do some sports. Okay. So if you want to know what's wrong with the United States, it's not that... Well, it is. It is. I don't know what I'm trying to say. The problem with the United States is that good, actual good, decent... Country loving people are just bowing to whoever gets upset at them. You're not standing for what you believe in. You're just stepping as I don't want to be confrontational. I don't want to. I as don't you say, the problem cause... is that most most people that that are good decent Americans, rather than standing up and making a difference are putting their heads down and just waking up tomorrow and going to work. Yeah. I just I just don't want to deal with it right now. I, I, I don't, don't want it. I don't just, know. Just as long as I can go to work, go to my movies. Oh, you can't go to movies now. Um, but anyway, part of the problem with the U.S. <laughs> okay, a simple wrong would have done just fine. But the- Yeah, you're wrong. 100% you're wrong. wrong. You're wrong. Um, I think it was... Uh, when was... Th- when was the Supreme Court thing on gay marriage? Was that 2010, 12, 13, something like that? I want to say that was while I was on my mission, so I think it was 2009. No, because I wrote a Facebook post all about 2008? it. 2008? That's why I know. Um, anyways. I remember talking about it on my mission um, with somebody. Because there was the California thing that was big. Early on, but then the Supreme Court didn't take... Anyways, whenever it was, um, I wrote this big, long Facebook post at the time that pointed out that if love won, who or what lost? Because according to the Supreme Court that overruled all of the state's laws, which is questionable on constitutionality, because there's no marriage anything in the Constitution. <laughs> so therefore, it's up to the states to decide what marriage is in the state. Um, the, uh, the Supreme Court ruled that all states must allow K-12 
can't discriminate gay marriage, whatever. And on a personal basis, I don't care. Go get married, do your thing, whatever. But if you're going to tell my state that voted to not have that, that they must have that, I'm going to start having issues. And, oh, dear. 15. 2015. Ha! Um, yeah, I, I admit I was wrong. <laughs> the, I, uh, it must have been Proposition 8 that it yeah, that was happened the California. while I was on my mission. The, uh, um, the big thing when the Supreme Court ruled on that is love wins, love wins, love wins, love wins. And I pointed out, if love wins, who or what lost? Because the... If you are gay or lesbian, if you are a man wanting to marry a man, you can do that. If you are a woman wanting to marry a woman, you can do that, according to the Supreme Court's ruling. And everyone that said love wins. But if you are a man wanting to marry two women, you can't do that. Who are you to define what love is? Is what we were told. People that were like, I really don't care what you do personally. Just legally, stop it. <laughs> If you, if you wanted to get people like me on board with your gay marriage thing, get the government out of marriage. Mm-hmm. Because... That was what I was saying back then. Yeah. Get, it's like, why why is the government even involved if you in remove, marriage? And this is why they didn't do that. Because if you remove marriage from the tax code, what's the point in fighting for it? Mm. There's no more tax exemption for marriage. So, what's the point in fighting for it if I'm not going to get money? Mm-hmm. Essentially. It's the point in getting married if you're not going to get it, get money for it. Right. Uh, and just Unless to, it's, uh, you know, what it originally was, which is a religious right. Yeah, uh, if, you, you know, if you go back to uh, the founding era with all these uh, people that created the country, you will find zero marriage licenses issued from the states for these men that were married to their spouses. In fact, I'm pretty sure if you suggested that they had to get permission from the government to marry they probably would have lynched you. At best. <laughs> After they tarred and feathered you. <laughs> and possibly dunked you in the tea. <laughs> possibly. <laughs> Which by that I mean the Boston Harbor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. been steeping for a couple hundred years yeah. now. I think it's about ripe. You will find documents from some of them of <clears throat> the church they were married in. Some sort of document saying... From you know, the church. Usually a Bible or something yeah. like that. That's with the That date. says that they were married before God on this day. Blah, 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 whatever is on the document. Not at all issued by the state. Now, if they wanted to argue for that, cool. And if you thought, I still want this state to be involved, you can go get some dumb certificate or whatever from the state. Whatever. But get it out of the tax code and you got a lot more people fighting for you. A lot more people fighting for you. But no, that wasn't the case. It was uh, love wins because a man should marry a man, be able to do that, and a woman should be able to marry a woman, and who are you to decide what love is? <coughs> um, but, you know, you people that want to marry multiple women or multiple men, you can't do that because you got this religion thing that's behind all that, and you, you can't have that. And man wants to marry a dog, can't do that. Well, now you can probably, but... <laughs> Then, well, I mean, <laughs> you can take a horse on a plane as a uh, <laughs> as, <laughs> as a comfort. as a companion animal. Yeah. Um, so there's so, that. So yeah, I I did this post pointing out the hypocrisy of the whole thing, basically. Um, and then from there, it basically just steamrolled downhill of all this social justice stuff, one after the other, after the other, after the other. La 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 la. You have to have your pronouns in your thing. And if you make fun of it, then you have to be removed from your Disney show. Are you trying to tell me that there's a slippery slope and that shit rolls downhill? Yes. Ah, oh, okay. 100%. Just checking. So, fast forward five years to now. Because 2015, that's when it, you said, right? Yep. So now, Team USA is allowed to protest the United States at the Olympics. Why are you representing the United States if you hate protesting the United States? Protesting the United States. 
where you Team USA to allow Olympic athletes to protest in support and, of racial and, and social the Olympics. Justice. Globally, it has been decided that the Olympics cannot have political protesting. Because it's supposed to be a unifying thing for the world to come together and say, hey, we have our differences. We'll just duke it out on the javelin throw or something like that. Something along those lines. Yeah. Let's see. No kind of demonstration or political, religious, or racial propaganda is permitted in any Olympic sites, venues, or other areas. The council's recommendation is built on the foundation that athletes should have the right to peacefully protest and demonstrate against racial and social injustice and to promote human dignity through global sport. I'm sorry, but if you're there representing the United States and you win the gold medal and the national, the United States national anthem is playing while you're up on that stage, if you take a knee, you do not deserve that gold medal because you don't deserve to be an American. No, because you do not deserve to have that spot. And someone, some athlete, that actually loves the United States and didn't qualify is sitting there on the side looking at you disrespect everything they fought for their entire lives to get and you just sham it away because my social injustice because black people get the virus more so that's why white people need to get the virus first. That's a thing. What? Yeah, the, the coronavirus stuff. Um, it's makes it's no sense. The coronavirus has been disappeared disproportionately affecting black people, so it's a racial issue, uh, minority people. Um, the virus is racist! And then on the next breath, they turn around and say, uh, because of racism and white supremacy, whatever garbage words, white people should be forced to take the vaccine first. But that doesn't make any sense. Unless you yourself are a racist then it makes perfect sense. Is this what double think sounds like? <laughs> yes. And this all stemmed from uh, this protest crap all started with uh, Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, he was kept from playing football because he did the thing. No, he's kept from playing football because he sucks. If you look at his stats, he sucks. I wish I... I could get paid that much money to ride a bench. Yes. He had like... One, I could join the NBA. He had like three good games, and that was it. What do you call a bunch of white guys sitting on a bench? The NBA. The NBA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he wasn't protesting the flag... Are you talking about when he said that he's protesting the flag? Or are you talking about when he said he's protesting... The flag. <laughs> which which, time? which which one of those are you talking about? Well, it's not about the country. It's about racism. Are you talking about when he said he's protesting the country and when the flag represents what he thinks it should represent, then he'll stand? Or are you talking about the other time that he said he's doing that? <laughs> it's okay. I'm just trying to... So my, my point behind all this... My point behind all this, same thing with this lockdown stuff. The reason why we're seeing what we're seeing, the reason why you have idiots getting away with clear election fraud. Go ahead, ban us, YouTube. Oh, no one watches. <laughs> <laughs> I say that. But there's like three people I think that watch. One of which may be you and or your wife. I haven't watched the YouTube videos. I listen to the podcast. Natural three. <laughs> it's a nat three. <laughs> you. What's your uh, your proficiency bonus on that? Uh, negative two. Negative two. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you fail the roll. And... Uh, <clears throat> uh, but my point with all this is... The reason why what I perceive to be evil is spreading in the world and across the country is not because evil people are everywhere and in charge of everything. The reason why it's happening is because good, honest, 
God-fearing, country-loving, whatever positive spin you want to put on yourself, those people don't want to get involved. They don't want to be the cause of contention. They don't want to be in the middle of it. It's just, I just don't want to deal with it. I don't really vote because it never really changes anything. Yeah, because you don't change it. That's why it never changes anything. Vote. Because you're not, you are not changing it for what you think should be. And if you think it's great that Michigan can have these kinds of reports and still certify their votes, screw you. <laughs> I feel disenfranchised. Because uh, you don't see anything like this in Utah, in Texas, and that's got some liberal strongholds in Austin and whatever city centers, Dallas. Um, you don't see things like this in Idaho. You don't see things like this in even Ohio really doesn't have this. Uh, where else? Interesting Flor enough though, actually, if Dominion as a, like across the board, right. Were, were to be audited. It actually would affect Utah. It would because Utah they, uses... they use the Utah or the Dominion voting systems. Yes. So. Um, but yeah, if you think uh, if you think videos of people pulling ballots out of cases hidden under tables after they push everyone out that are supposed to be there to make sure everything's above board and then proceed to count those ballots. If you think that video does not count as evidence, is not reason to question the authorities who said everything's above board, everything's above board, you want to testify about it? No, I don't want to testify about it. Let's go ahead and make sure that count's actually correct. Screw you if you think that's okay. <laughs> because the more you let things like this just simmer and I don't want to deal with it, it's too much, I don't want to be confrontational, whatever, have your, have your little autonomous zone, whatever, the more it's going to happen. And the more you're going to have to be involved. You have to pick a side. Like I said before, last week, the end of last week, there are three people, three types of people. There are sheep, there are wolves, and there are sheepdogs. Which one are you going to be? You're just going to go with the flow because eventually you go with the flow. There's going to be less and less of you. You're either going to be devoured by the wolves or abandoned by the sheepdog. And either way, you get <laughs> devoured by the wolves. <laughs> with that, yeah. the other sports story, and then I'm done. Osa! Osa! I totally thought that said OSHA when I first read it. Well, it was, was tiny. Like, it's what tiny the print. crap did OSHA do to us this time? Ohio, uh, the Ohio State. Oh, I O. Oh, Ohio, Ohio, Ohio. Uh, the Ohio State Athletic Association Association has is allowing wrestling to happen again in the state. Woot for the uh, high schools and stuff. The only caveat is they can't shake hands. You can I, smash your heads together and I, smear your face in each other's crotch, but you can't shake hands. I, I, uh, you can get spit, sweat, and blood all over the place, but you can't shake hands because this deadly disease is out there causing hospitals to be at the exact same rate of fulfillment that they are right now. <laughs> Mr. Maddox just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. No, God will not have mercy on your soul, because you're an idiot i'm not one to judge people's souls <laughs> but if you're that ignorant um because 
I've never done wrestling, but I've seen some wrestling matches. And I've done wrestling. I'm pretty sure you touch hands a few times. It's not the only thing you touch. I, I, I realize. I realize. <laughs> I said before, rubbing each other's faces in each other's crotch. I said that before. Oh, wrestling. But I'm pretty wow. sure when you're both kind of like crouched standing there, whatever, you're trying to get your grab and you block the person's yeah, hand yeah. with your oh, hand, yeah. right? Yeah. And and if you manage a successful shoot, then you're grappled and, you know, that's always fun. Take it to the mat and then you're laying on top of each other. The real fun would be if they... pin somebody down and... I mean, it's a full contact sport, so... It's a full contact... F- <laughs> here's here's all those on the team bench also need to observe social distancing of six feet after they've spent the entire week sparring with each other with faces in crotches and sweat and blood and hands and all this stuff touching each other. Yeah, there's zero logic in any of these rules. And if you th- if you think it's just this one off thing, go go look at the NFL whose ratings are basically gone. Yeah, you know, this pe- reminds me of that that meme where it's got the board, you know, like the 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 board of of directors or whatever. <laughs> the, and it's the, like anybody got any ideas for the our, office meeting? Yeah, yeah, the office meeting. So anybody got any ideas for how we can allow wrestling in schools again? And the one guy's like, "How about we just open it up and let them do it because it's a full contact sport and they're gonna touch each other anyway." And they throw him out the window. Somebody else. Uh, how about we just make it so they don't shake hands? Brilliant. Among the new rules is this should be a Babylon Bee article. This should <laughs> be a Babylon Bee article, but it's from WLWT, a uh, affiliate of uh, NBC, right? Yeah. That's the Peacock. Mm-hmm. Among the new rules is student athletes are permitted to wrestle, but must refrain from handshakes before and after the match. I realize you guys just been rolling around in each other's spit, blood, and sweat, but don't shake hands because that'll spread the germs. Wrestlers are also required to wear facial coverings off the mat when not actively competing or warming up. Equipment should not be shared. If equipment needs to be shared, OSA mandates the proper sanitation between use. Like... Every time without the Rona that should be done anyway. Student athletes must also sanitize their hands before and after warm-ups at all timeouts and period breaks anytime they leave the competition or practice mats. But just their hands because the Rona doesn't get on you anywhere else. Your hands have this sticky goo on them that the Rona just loves. It. It doesn't affect you when you're eating food or when you're wrestling as long as you wash your hands. Another big change comes from officiating. To conclude the end of a match procedure, the official may point to the winning wrestler while raising his or her own arm with open hand, having the requisite wristband color red or green of the winning wrestler. So so this guy that's less than six feet away, huffing and puffing with them, huffing and puffing can't touch their hands after I, he's I think also, that's a picture from last year wrestling. I, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is, but they still have to get in close to make sure there's no illegal shenanigans going on. Right? Yes. Yes. Uh, for, for the safety of everyone. I'm pretty sure we don't want our high school kids necks and arms and stuff to be broken from a, grapple or move that shouldn't have happened. a bad move that shouldn't have happened. Um, And then on top of that, they're rolling around in the same spit, sweat, and blood that the uh, athletes are rolling around in. And then they can't touch their hand. They can point to them. (laughs) And they have more stuff for all the other sports. So, I mean... And back to my point with the NFL, they get tested... Every single day. And if their test results come back positive, they're not allowed to show up to practice or to play the game. So the only people at the games have negative test results. Mm -hmm. But they can't be within six feet of each other. 
they have to wear a mask. I feel the same way about planes. You right? have to have a negative test result to get on the plane. To get on the plane. And then planes you have, to- have studies that show that they are probably the safest place as far as transmission goes. Yeah. Yet you have to wear a mask for the entire trip. Right. Right. Wake up. Because... <laughs> uh, so this is how Liberty dies. With thunderous applause. No, it dies to silent submission. That... That gets... Eerier and More eerier. and more troubling every year. <laughs> and with, every year. With the airplanes, did you see that story with the family kicked off the plane because the two-year-old wasn't wearing a mask? Yeah. Uh, CDC says, currently says three and up. The airline, their rules for the airline says a three and up. And the father was physically holding a mask over the child that did not want to wear the mask and they were kicked off the flight because she wasn't wearing a mask. But, you know, when the uh, cookies and pretzels and stuff come around, you can take your mask off the plane. But what's yeah. most sickening about that is not a single person on the plane stood up for that family. Yeah. Right. Not a single one. The whole plane should have evacuated. Because if it's that <clears throat> dangerous... For, so, the whole plane should have evacuated for one of two reasons. Either the virus is actually that dangerous and someone unmasked can kill everyone. Because that's what the media says, right? Mm-hmm. So everyone should have just been evacuated off the plane because this child would not wear a mask and that's just deadly dangerous. So evacuate the plane, sanitize the plane, then reboard. If it's that bad. Or, or the whole plane should have evacuated because they're a-holes enforcing stupid policies that do not work. Yeah, mm-hmm. studies show studies show nothing. Studies show that I'm right, you're wrong. I've seen them. I've seen them all. I had two weeks to look at them. Paid two weeks to look at it because I had the Rona and I basically thought I had allergies. And I was at work for an entire week because I thought I had allergies and they went away with an allergy pill. I know that's not every case. I know that's not every case. But the data says my case is more common than the worst case. Yeah. About ninety nine about ninety nine point seven percent more common than the other case. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and when you add into the fact that uh <clears throat> the C D C I think it was last week, two weeks ago, said that they now believe that the Rona has been in the US as early as December of last year. Do you know how they found that out? How? The Red Cross. <gasps> so what? people people donating blood and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Red Cross, on a hunch, decided, hey, let's look at some of the... CDC says it was probably here before February, whenever the first case appeared in the United States. But they didn't really have anything to back it up, and so they didn't really release an f- official report. They said it might have been here earlier than we think. So the Red Cross is like... We got some blood supplies from December. We can check that. Surprise! The Rona's been here longer than they say it has. Yeah, I'm 90% sure I had it in January. <clears throat> yeah. When we got back from London. Right. <clears throat> yeah, because yeah. if it was in the United States in December, it was everywhere mm-hmm. in December. Right. And Which means the majority of us have probably already had it. Yes. Which means we've probably already started herd immunity. Uh huh. Which would explain why it's a ninety nine point seven percent survivability rate. Huh. Huh. But wear the mask because when the vaccine comes to you, you still have to wear a mask because reasons. Control. The vaccine will work. It will. It will work. There so are long many, as, so many, long as you wear the mask. Many forms of evil in the world. <sighs> The tendency to stand by and allow others to be mistreated is one of the most abhorrent to Mm -hmm. me. Yes. And one of the second most abhorrent to me is the ideal of collectivism. 
the idea that we should all be the same, that we should all have the same, that there should be no variance because we are all individuals. We all have our own ideas, our own thoughts, our own feelings. And to try to give everyone the same thing and make everyone the same is a crime against human spirit and against human existence. It is why I hate the idea of Marxism. It's why I hate the principles and policies of socialism and it is why I will never be silent about it. Um, great, you're making me look something up that I need to say. <laughs> what, what are you looking up? Two things. Oh. I like two things. I would continue to rant, but I ran out of gas right about there. (laughs) Uh, Silence in the face of evil is itself evil. Ah, yes. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a uh, quick history lesson for you. He was a uh, World War II, well, pre World War II in Germany. He was a little upset that a uh, certain uh, authoritarian was uh, locking people inside, keeping them from worshiping as they please, and forcing them to actually worship a certain way by put, replacing pictures of Jesus with himself. Uh, oh, Cuomo. Cuomo, uh, China. Oh, wait, um, uh, no, Hitler. Hitler. Oh, um, oh. <laughs> yeah. Easy Forcing mistake people to, to make. stay inside for their safety, um, having people be marked in certain ways for their safety. And Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a uh, priest, I believe, that uh, decided, you know, enough's enough and spoke out against the authoritarian that was there and he was put in jail and eventually killed. Hmm. But uh, before he was killed, that's one of the things he said. Silence in the face of evil is itself evil. If you're standing there doing nothing while a family is struggling to get a two-year-old to comply with an arbitrary mask mandate from some stupid department that has no legal authority to issue such a mandate... You are e- as evil as the people dragging that two-year-old off the plane because they just wanted to go to New York and see some things. I don't know why, because New York is closed. <laughs> but people. you will not be held guiltless because you should know better in those instances. If you do not speak, <clears throat> you are speaking. If you do not act, you are acting. Compliance to ish going on is allowing more ish to continue and you are just as guilty as the ish makers. People need to remember that the people that are telling them these things, the people that are directing them to do these things that are saying it's fine, just believe me, that are saying (laughs) there's no fraud, just submit just concede the people that are saying you have to wear a mask there is nothing special about them there is nothing about Biden there is nothing about Harris there is nothing about Trump there is nothing about any of the people that you have been told your entire life are authority figures. There is nothing about them that makes them special. They are people. If somebody walks up to you on the street dressed in regular clothes and tells you to lay down on the ground, what authority do they have 
to tell you that if you don't want to. The only authority that any government, that any organization, that any group has in this world is no more than the authority that we as people give them. <clears throat> the second thing that I had to look up. <laughs> I thought we were going to be done. Apparently, we have things we have to say. Apparently. <laughs> <clears throat> More so you than me. This may sound familiar. <laughs> These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of their country. But he that stands it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered, yet we have this consolation with us, that the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. What we obtain too cheap, we esteem too lightly. It is dearness only that gives everything its value. Heaven knows how to put a proper price upon its goods, and it would be strange indeed if so celestial an article as freedom should not be highly rated. Thomas Paine, December 23rd, 1976. Sounds like common sense to me. It does sound like common sense, something that is gone in today's society, apparently. Apparently. Um, I'm not saying you go and grab your gun and start a revolution. That's not, no, that's what, not what I'm what advocating for here. The American people are amazingly patient with tyrants. It took the founders a while before they finally drafted the Declaration of Independence. It took them a while before they threw some tea off the boats into the harbor. And even then, they replaced the lock that they broke. <laughs> <laughs> we're, they were almost Canadians. <laughs> almost. Almost. <laughs> but... uh the American people are amazingly patient. World War I, we tried to stay out of it. We knew we should have been involved because there was a lot of bad stuff going on. And we technically were involved in shady stuff. But the people themselves, the American people themselves, not the government, not the American government, the American people, they probably knew we probably should be involved somehow and help those that we believe are fighting for freedom. We waited until a cruise ship got destroyed that might have actually been carrying supplies that it shouldn't have been carrying but anyway <laughs> then the american people got involved world war ii what's his name fdr i'm not getting involved fdr involved. loved hitler he thought what hitler was doing was great well it was fdr so it's really yeah. not surprising no and a lot of uh a lot of his following also looked at Hitler and said, a lot of what he's doing is great. But there were some reports floating around that what Hitler was doing was not so good, especially within Germany, Germany proper. <laughs> Germany. Germany. <laughs> Germany proper. And uh, some people were saying, I think we probably need to help Europe fight this Hitler guy. Uh, so much so that there were Americans, especially American pilots, that went to Canada to be pilots for Canada and England to help defend England against Germany. Of their own free will and choice, <laughs> they went to Canada and said, hey, you guys need some pilots? Yes. <laughs> England? Yes. Yes, we need pilots. Send, yes. send pilots. Yes. We, uh, we have planes, need pilots. <laughs> it almost sounds like something really American to do. I mean, like... You know, a special forces team that after getting out of the uh, military decided to just go end human trafficking. <laughs> yeah, kind of <laughs> like that. So they didn't have to deal with the red tape. Um, oh, you are. Um, <laughs> shout out. Shout out. Uh, but World War II, we finally got involved when someone overstepped the line. Japan was warned by Germany, do not attack the United States. Do not attack it the United States. will not end well. Don't poke the bear. <laughs> what does Japan do? <laughs> eh, they poke, the, they bear. poke the bear. They basically had no choice. They were being choked out. They had no oil. 
Mm-hmm. They needed some oil to expand their fleet. Yeah, um, midway. Yeah. So uh, they poked the bear, and then the United That's States fun. was like, okay, all of you stop fighting. We're done. And the United States fought on two fronts, stopped the Germany thing, and then went to Japan and ended the crap out of that. <laughs> all right. One thing you led to another. You sit down. <laughs> You just cease. <laughs> you need a simmer for a couple minutes. Bad joke. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, historically, Americans are extremely patient. Yeah. But you've been trying our patience for at least four years, if not 12 or more. Or more. Because just for the last four years... I, w- I turned into a Trump supporter, not because I thought Trump is next to God, not because of anything like that. I hated Trump. I didn't want Trump. I'd still rather not. <laughs> However, every time I pointed out, Donald Trump's racist, but, but what? How? Well, how? Why? Where? Look, he's when? not condemning this. He, but he said in this statement that he condemned. Oh, so you're with him? No, I'm just saying that he's not. You are. He's lying. not what you said he is. I'm saying that you are lying. So, well, you're a racist then. What? Four years of that, mm-hmm. and you've got me in his bank. <laughs> no. And I'm not the only one. There are millions well, of more people that feel the same way of just watching everything they love, everything they stand for, their sports that were their escape from politics became political, became this social justice, false racist garbage that now nobody watches in the middle of a pandemic where they can't go out and do anything. I still watch the UFC. Yeah. Cause they don't have all that. They garbage. don't have the, the pandering garbage. Yeah. NFL ratings just came out, uh, Thanksgiving ratings, mm-hmm. half of what they were last year. Did the Super Bowl even happen yet? That's February, January, February. Oh. Uh. Exactly. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> NBA ratings, darn near zero. As they should be. As they should be. It's a communist sport. <laughs> As they should be. Literally, because it's sponsored by and, China. You know... In, in all these things we've talked about, it's also important to note that the side that we want to be on was not the only side, even in America. And it wasn't the easy side. It takes courage to get together a group of people and sign a declaration of treason Yep. Against the most powerful country in the world. The most powerful person in the, the world. The most powerful person in the world. Calling him to the mat for war crimes and for crimes against humanity and declaring that he is not your ruler. It takes courage to stand up against a wrong in the world, not because somebody wronged you, but because you believe that freedom is something worth fighting for for everyone. It takes courage to stand up when everybody else is laying down. And it takes special kinds of people to bring that together and to do those amazing things. And not everybody is that. And not everybody will support that. Not everybody you know will say, oh, I'm glad that you're standing up. Not everybody you know will support you in doing that kind of thing. The Declaration of Independence was not the only declaration that Americans signed. There was another declaration, the Declaration of Dependence, that was also signed by a sect in the American colonies stating that they were loyalists to the king, stating that they needed Britain 
to survive, stating that freedom was not important. Nobody knows about that declaration because it didn't take courageous people to sign that. It didn't take grit and honor and something a little bit more than everybody else has to stand up and fight for that kind of declaration. That kind of declaration, all it takes is laying down and letting people walk on you. All it takes is conceding, backing up, letting the line get moved, and continuing to do that and continuing to do that until you've got nowhere left to go. And no one left behind you to support you. And that's the direction the world is heading. We're getting pushed back. We've been getting pushed back for decades. And unless people start seeing it and grab hold of the courage that runs in our blood, because it does, it runs in all of us. Americans today, our ancestors didn't come from America. They were from Britain, from Africa, from Australia, from all over the world. So regardless of where you're from originally, the ideals of America are founded in the courage of men and women that stood for something rather than just laying down. America is great because America is good. We are good. I'm not saying we, Mike and I, the podcast, are good. I was <laughs> going to say, here, you're, you're, you're making are, an assumption there. I don't know are, if I can claim that. We are but terrible people. We're terrible people. Do not trust us, <laughs> which is why we post our sources. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we as Americans, we are good. People in our government... I don't know. I can point to a couple that are probably good, but I don't know. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Why don't you run? Because I don't want to commit suicide. (laughs) Don't wish that on me. Don't, don't, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Don't wish that on me. Don't bring that on me, Ricky Bobby. (laughs) Don't bring that on me, Ricky Bobby. (laughs) If you go back and look at what America does, go back to Every natural disaster, no matter where it happens in the world, almost every time the first to show up is Americans. Whether it's our military or some organization within the United States, first to show up with some kind of relief. Even if that relief is the military parking their, uh, the Navy parking the hospital ship off the shore. (laughs) We're here. (laughs) We We will help. Arrived. And Here through I all of history, even the day. Uh, what was it after the 2016 election? There was a hurricane that hit uh, Texas. Was that Texas? Was it in 2017 or something like that? Anyway, and there were people that were trapped in houses, trapped on their roofs, whatever, because of the flooding. And they didn't care who you voted for, just to, uh, who you we're going, I, whenever this happened, either you were going to vote for or you had just voted for. They didn't care about that. They cared that you were there and you were helping them because that's what America does. Um, Alexis, Alexis de, de Tocqueville talks about the uh, exceptionalism that is within America. It is not found in the government buildings. It is not found in the courts. It is found in the cathedrals, in the churches, in the fields. That is where the goodness of America is found. It's not found at the White House. It's not found in Congress. not found at the Supreme Court. That's not where the goodness is found. The goodness is found in our homes, in our places of worship, in our businesses. That is where the goodness of America is. That is who we are. We are not this group of sheep that are fighting against each other for the same plot of grass 
ignoring the commands of the wolf, ignoring the commands of the sheepdogs that are trying to warn us that, hey, some wolves are coming from here, here, and here. We need to go this way. Don't worry, there's plenty of grass for all of you. Instead, we're arguing and bickering over this little plot of grass while the wolves come in and start devouring us, and we're wondering why the herd's getting so much smaller and has no power. And then wondering why the wolf, the sheepdogs are uh, warning us less and less because the sheepdogs don't want to be eaten by the wolves either, so they leave the sheep to protect themselves. That's what's happening to us. We're allowing BS garbage to influence everything we do. If you are going with the flow, if you are agreeing with everything you see in social media and with the mainstream media, you are not a sheepdog. You are a sheep. And if you are pushing those things, you are a wolf. If you needed that clarification, there it is. <laughs> Mike and I are trying to be sheepdogs. We're trying to just follow the truth. We might be sheep in sheepdogs' clothing. We don't. <laughs> It's, we're in training. It's, we're in training. Sheepdogs in training. <laughs> <laughs> the revolution was fought and won with, I believe, less than 10%, or with less than 15% of the population. Mm -hmm. And about 10 to 15% of the population thought they should be loyal to England. The rest of them just sat on the side and said, I don't know. Just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. Doesn't matter to me. If the rest of them fought along too, that war would not have lasted as long. Because <laughs> uh, it's a lot harder to fight an entire country as it is a little rabble of rebels. Uh -huh. But somehow, might even say divinely inspired, their own words, not mine, that rabble of rebels beat off the strongest army Navy in the world. It's a fun history. You really should read into it. And we probably will get to sure. that in our uh, Naked Apple stuff. In our... Uh, naked history. Uh, naked history stuff. Yep. Yeah. Slices of history. Slices that of one. history. That's the thing. That's the one. <laughs> Slices. We can't even promote our own stuff correctly. No wonder Jeez. we don't get paid. No wonder we don't get paid. <laughs> <laughs> We've been saying it wrong the whole time. The whole time. <laughs> well... That's all we got. That's all we got. Um, we could probably keep going, but that's all we, we got. We, it's we could keep two going, hours but, but now. We need. We need to stop. <laughs> we need to stop. So and uh, uh, we'll get infuriated next week and talk about things then. As always, like, subscribe, comment, send us a message, share, share. That's that's the biggest one. Share. Mm -hmm. If you meet anyone, anyone in your little circle that slightly agrees with you or is even mildly open-minded to hearing something contrary to what's on the mainstream media or, as we showed you, not on the mainstream media, share this mm -hmm. thing and tell them, hey, give these guys a listen. I know they rabble on for an hour longer than they probably should. At least. <laughs> but we only come out once a week. So technically, if you listen to like a half an hour every you day, have a whole you week. have like four days worth of entertainment. But no, it really does. It really does help. And even we found out you can accidentally uh, tag us when you're trying to cite <laughs> a, uh, some, some restaurant, some restaurant or, or winery in Australia has the same name as us. And if you're trying to tag them and you tag us, thank you. We'll take it. We'll take it. A boost is a boost. <laughs> we have a spike in uh, Australian views that week. I don't know. I'll have to look. I'll have that'd to be, look. That'd be good to know. There was a, the, it did give us more page views. Right after, <laughs> uh, that was funny. That's awesome. Yeah. We love All you guys. Right. Love you guys. We'll catch you later. Oh, uh, next week is Christmas. It so is Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Yes. Um, and I am moving this weekend, so I do not know what the schedule next week will look like. We will Pending. try to get an episode done um, as best we can, but uh, we'll keep you posted. So catch you guys later. Bye. Wrong one. Mm, wrong one. That's the right one.
Yay! And then I, <laughs> I that, no, uh, <laughs> and I can go over here. Uh, no, no, wait, no. Ah, uh, uh, that was last <laughs> week. We can't use that. <laughs> can't have the okay. Can't I'll have the same a, behind the I'll, scenes twice. I'll, I'll use a different one. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Uh, wrong. Uh, nope. Uh, uh, all right. Oh, okay. We ready? Right. We need to uh, clap sync or anything? I mean, if you want. <laughs> no! <laughs> you don't want the clap? I'm done with the viruses. <laughs> done. <laughs> that's, that's the new, uh, that's the new theme song for our coronavirus segment. <laughs> I got the vid, I'm giving it to you. I've got the vid, I'm giving it to you. Actually, you're probably not, but still. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, let's go then. Okay. <laughs>